Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement guide And this time we're getting it all in the awesome, The Journey Down Chapter 1 well, This was developed by Sky Goblin, published by Blipworks and is usually available on its own for $5.79 Or is part of a bundle which usually costs $31.99 But this week is on sale, all three games for just $3.19, what a bargain So if you're watching this in the future, just keep an eye out for any future future sales now, we're just going to get straight on with it. So basically, all the achievements are very easy, but there is one that we have to do in one play... Well, it could be any playthrough, but we've got to beat the game in under 40 minutes. So it may seem complicated, but it's not too bad. Um, I'm going to give you a few hints to speed up your playthrough. So, left stick is to obviously move the cursor. The right and left bumper is to look and pick things from your inventory. You've got to press the Y button to open up your inventory. A and drag an item along to combine it with another. If you hold the right trigger while looking around, that actually speeds the cursor up, which helps big time. Also, another big thing I can mention is, anytime you see a red arrow, i.e. go into a new room or scene, etc., if you double tap the A button, you'll go straight there instead of walking, which saves a good few minutes as well. So as we begin, we're also going to skip every cutscene with the B button. So immediately as we begin a new game, press B to skip the B, uh, skip... Press B to skip the cutscene, and keep spamming the A button to just smash through all the dialogue. Now I must, I must stress that there is room for mistakes. I did make quite, f quite a few mistakes in this playthrough, but still beat it in around 35-36 minutes. So keep spamming the A button, and we should um, eventually open up this uh, hatch. What we need to do then is interact with all four brackets in what we have to do. Um, so there we go, interact with all four brackets and then pull the hatch and then pull the switch. Also, what I would advise, if you do need to pause it, I advise just saving the game and quitting. Because the game plays in the background when you pause it, I'm unsure if the time actually still continues in the background. So, if you need to pause it, just, uh, press pause, save the game and quit out and then go back into it. Press the, uh, press B there to skip the cutscene and we're gonna go through a little bit of dialogue. So, slam that A button once again. God damn, already knackered. That's always good. Um, right, so let's just keep spamming through the dialogue for a second. Oh my! What's wrong? And we enter this little shop. We'll be coming here a few times, but what we're gonna do when she moves out of the way, have a look at the back in the cupboard, and press the A button there. And he's going to get some cheeky little breadsticks, which uh, eventually just break your teeth, which is about right. So press the right and left bumper to get something out of your inventory, and then use those breadsticks on the ladder. Again, remember to use the right trigger when you're uh, moving around with your cursor to make your cursor go faster. Then you can go up the steps. And remember, every time you see the red arrow, double tap the A button to get to a scene uh, instead of walking there. When she stops talking, come on, yap, yap, yap. Stop talking, oh, damn it! We need <laughs> we need all the minutes we can get. Ah, uh, finally, damn it. Anyway, interact with the dresser right by Buana, who is the main character, of course. Buana Buana, Buana Banana. We're gonna get a nice shirt. Lovely. Right, next thing, have a look at the paintbrush just in the fireplace. Make sure to interact with the paintbrush there. In the fireplace. Have a look at the photo just to the left of Lena Luna Lana, whatever her name is, and interact with the picture for our first achievement. Man, that's some weird looking people. Jesus Christ. So, my palette is afraid of heights. There we go. And then we can just press the red arrow to the right of the screen to go back and then interact with the bed. And there's going to be a little unskippable cutscene, but again, smash, smash, smash that dialogue. Smash it like you're smashing a pasty down your gut or down your neck. Also, one other thing I should mention when you're spamming the A button, with the dialogue, of course, try and be careful sometimes, because you might actually keep talking to that character without realising. So, spam it, but try not to spam it too much. You kind of need a good bit of... It's a good technique to have, but uh, yeah, try not to spam it too much, because you don't want to keep replaying the same bloody dialogue options with the same people. So, after all that then, and again, a lot of dialogue options in this game don't matter, so don't panic about um, any of that. So we're going to get through the first puzzle. What we need to do is interact with the middle dial once. So you've got the sort of black piece on the left. The right dial three times. And then type in the number 450. So 450 and the scene will automatically change. And that's it, man. 
I don't actually know her name because I can't actually say, I think it's Lena or Luna or something or other. Yeah, anyway, keep spamming, spam, spam, spamity, spam, spam that pasty. You got what? You did. A couple of times. What? Oh, no. And when we regain control of Wana, what we're going to do is just go back into the little boat plane thing. Uh, what uh, our friends working on Kima interact with the hatch which is basically this looks like a seat and grab the wrench out of there Lovely job, right? Let's go to the right or Lena her name is yeah, that'll do Lina bean right interact with the net and we're just basically gonna grab that Hey Grab it man There we go and for our second achievement of the game What we're gonna do is interact with the photos on the, the three photos on the left hand side You've got to interact with each one and just smash through the dialogue on each one, and that's going to get us the next achievement. A lot of achievements here just for looking at photos. If I could get paid for looking at photos, that would go well. Anyway, let's back out of there again by pressing the right arrow on the right-hand side, or the red arrow on the right-hand side, and go all the way back up to the main bit. Right from here, we are going to go into the charter, which is just behind us in the shop. So that one, yeah, that'll do. Right, now we are going to interact with the uh, photo on the right hand side, top right hand corner, Captain Koa Gongu or whatever his friggin' name is, well he's a, an attractive, <laughs> attractive man. Interact with the picture anyway, that unlocks the achievement and then we can back out and go to the fridge on the left hand side. Koa Nadodo, hell of a name bro. Right, so we got some cheese man, that's good now, now we can back out and go down out of the house. Right, from here we're going to go to the bottom right hand corner, which is a uh, sort of power box area. Go into, uh, grab your paintbrush and put it in the paint bucket. Let's dip it white man, let's do this. So there we go, so you should now have a white paintbrush. Now from here we're going to go all the way to the right hand side, into this sort of little area. And we're going to talk to the sailors, little bar cafe area, that's nice. But when the dialogue options, be careful here, when the dialogue option comes up, make sure to choose the second one, how's the stew tonight? How's the stew tonight? Pretty good, man. So, that's all good, now we've got a couple of chilies out of them, so that's what we need to talk to them for. Then choose, never mind, man, we're out of here, bruh. Right, so from here we're going to speak to the fisherman, Matoki, on the right-hand side. Um, or we, we don't have to say anything to him, we can literally just say, up your guts, mate, we are out of here for a sec. So, blah, 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 blah. Right, talk to you later, Matoki. I gotta run. Yeah, nice, um, yeah, nice fishing rod. We'll be back for that. So, anyway, go left again. Remember to keep tapping the, double tapping the A button when you see the red arrow to get to the next scene immediately. And then from here, we can go with it. It says the gas station on the left-hand side, just the bottom left. Here we go. And then what we can do is, um, we need to use the cheese on the float. So that's why that wasn't working. We have to use the cheese. So again, right or left bumper to whack open your cheese and put it on the float. This was one part where I messed up and I spent around 30 or 40 seconds uh, standing around forgetting to put the cheese on the float. Uh, so you do have room for mistakes. Of course, just try not to make too many mistakes, of course. Uh, now we've got to see if the rat man catches the bitch or not. Ah, so we did, man, so we did. By the way, I've got to apologise for all my terrible accents in the game. I'm sure you're used to it by now. Anyway, we're going to the bottom right this time. We're not going into the charter. Again, this was one little mistake. We're going to the bottom right, back to the sort of bar slash cafe area. So go right here again. And then we can speak to Matoki once again. So, yeah, like I said, I do, I do make a, a few little mistakes. I haven't put them in the video, but I'll obviously just tell you where so you can think that... Ah. Well, at least the Welsh hunter is more stupid than everyone else. Which is true, which is a shame. Anyway, <laughs> right, this guy catches a rat, job done. We've got the rat, job done. That gets us the achievement called Cheese Freeze as well. And we've got the fishing pole as well. Oh, rat man, rat master do. Right, so from here we're going to go back to the left. So double tap A and double tap A on the middle section, just to the left of the power box there, to come to this little, little generator area. Interact with the garbage can directly in front of Buana, and we get a little hook as well. Now, open up your inventory with the Y button, 
and press the A button on the hook and drag it over to the fishing rod. That is going to give us a fishing rod. That makes sense. Interact with the graffiti on the right hand side just by the elevator there and that is going to be the wake up sheeple achievement. Which, how many of those, <laughs> how many of those are about? Um, go in the middle, just to the left of the elevator, and speak to the dock master. Who kind of looks like Thanos in a weird way. Uh, right, so anyway, um, we don't have a password. So you can literally just say Gmail. Yeah, in fact, you can say anything you want. It makes no difference. Um, but what we can do now, there is a boy. b y Just in the background, in the water. A boy oi oi boy Anyway, use your fishing rod on the boy. And uh, we're going to fish that out, and then all you have to do is just press the A button there to interact with the buoy. And that gets us another little item that we need. That was easy. That won't help. And I say that, actually, what we need to do is interact with the boy, and then we need to use the net. I tried using the net before for some reason, but now we can use the net to get the crab. We need to give somebody crabs. So use the net, and that gets a caged crab. Then we can go back to the left, and then we can go um, back to the up to get back to the power box here. And then we are going to go uh, to the right into the cafe area once again, Mama Makinas. Now we need to talk to the sophisticated soldiers, uh, sailors, but we need to pick another specific dialogue. So, um, say what ship are you on? Yep, 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 all good. And then again, try not to spam the dialogue options here too much, because there is one we need to say. But when the dialogue option appears, we need to choose the third option, which is I'm the new deckhand. So, the third option there, which was I'm the new deckhand on ship. Uh, never mind. We can just crack on with that one now, and now we can go into inventory, use the paint brush on the shirt, and somehow that gets us on a ship. If it's the, it, Apparently it's that easy to get yourself on a ship. Now you need to show that shirt to the sailors. Uh, I accidentally just talked to them again, but don't worry, you don't have to do that. I just need to show this shirt to the sophisticated sailors. Again, it's that easy to get yourself on a naval ship, so if you ever wanted to be in the navy, paint the blue shirt with uh, a bit of white on it, job done. Right, so they've given us the password, very hilariously. Now we didn't need to give crabs to the dog. That's for another story. Um, so, give your dog the crabs. Not the red rocket of life, just the red crabs. Again, that's uh, sick, either way you look at it. Right, after that we can just go left. We'll come back to that door later. We're going to go left again, into the sort of main area. And we're going to go back into the charter shop. Now we need to use our fishing hook that we have. So, get out the fishing rod and use it on the fan above. And apparently that works. Press the B button there to skip the cutscene, and his big chunky six head will catch that with no problems. But the fans broke, so we need to fix that. So for now, we're going to head back down, and now we are going to go back down to the bottom right again, to the power box area, and go up this time. So into the sort of generator elevator, go up again next to the ship, uh, speak to Thanos the Dockmaster. I finally okay. fear the hunt. I could s got well. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, uh, me. So after speaking to Doc Master Thanos, um, he's going to give us the, the mop, and we can just say see you later, man. Aye, right. right, cheers, uh, big fan. Right now we can actually enter up onto the ship. Brilliant. Now we uh, have to interact with the gas canister on the bottom right there. That would do that one. We've just accidentally burnt um, one of the uh, people working here. Sorry about that. Uh, sorry about that, Dal. Right, now we can use the wrench on the nut to uh, get that one open. And then we can use the propeller, or the fan, sorry, with the nut as well. So then what's going to happen is basically we're going we're gonna to trick her into fixing it, basically. So that's um, all good. Thank you very much. God damn, that is a... Yeah, she's... Yeah, she's cute. She's awesome. Right, so, thanks for the fan. That is all fixed. Now we can just head back out to the left. And then what we need to do is actually just keep interacting. You can just keep um, uh, clicking the same bottom switch until the scene changes. Um, Buana gets all pissy. And eventually we just move on. So just keep clicking that bottom switch for a second. 
until he gets all angry. He's but I hit. We go. Little bit of and it's good advice, if something doesn't work, just give it a couple of kicks and it'll work problem. Right, uh, work no problem. So as soon as you said it's all aligned and perfect, climb up the ladder, press B to skip the cutscene, and then this is a little unskippable cutscene here where Juan is going to climb down and basically land on the ship. Good stuff. It's an easier way to get on, I'm sure. Oh, man. That uh oh well, can't s buddy. So yeah, about that nip the bit, didn't it, lad? Right, anyway, now we're onto the boat. Go into the right on the kitchen. And there is a chef here. I think his name's Stabo or Slabo. Swabo. It's something anyway. Uh, keep... Whoa, okay. So he <laughs> almost kills us. So we need to go back in the kitchen when that happens anyway. A uh, bit of conversation. Basically, he's a useless chef. Uh, so what you need to do is interact with the stew... Not go exactly where I went, you just need to interact with the stew. Old ratatouille looking black eyed chef right there. Yogla, this yogla man. When you interact with the stew and he says that, now we need to interact with Chef Sabo, not Stabo. Although Chef Stabo uh, would have been appropriate for him almost decapitating us just there. Uh, so he's basically going to be sad for a sec. I would be with that mustache as well, to be honest. Although my mustache is ginger, so I'm not going to say much. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I. I. Hmm. McKay is. So we will be back then to disturb him later on, but for now we're going to get some 11 herbs and spices KFC style. So we're going to exit out and then exit to the right out of the boat, and then we're going to exit down. So eventually we're going to exit down. Okay, there we go, exit down. And then we're just going to go all the way to the left. So, back to the left. And there we go then. So, now we're going to go up. So, back to the power box bit. And then we're going to go to the right, to the cafe area. All the sailors and everything, nice. Now we're going to go into the door where Rufus, uh, where we gave Rufus crabs. So, going through that door, have a quick chat with Rasta Woman. And then we're going to grab the wheel from... Uh, just above her head on the left hand side there. So grab the wheel first. Makina. Mama Makina. Can I borrow this? Sure. You're somehow good. Why? And after we grab said, grab said wheel, speak to Mama Makina. Now make sure we choose the second dialogue option, which is why does, why does your stew taste so good, man? What the hell? So she's got a whole bunch of spice mixes. So now we have to go in a bloody big jolly um, about trying to get uh, the 11 KFC herbs and spices. So, let's go do this thing. Now we can just say, later lady. Later lady. Later lady. Right, there we go. We got there eventually. Uh, right, don't, you don't need to speak to her again. Again, that's just uh, accidental um, extra dialogue I accidentally spoke to her about. So we're going to exit. We're going to go and uh, press Y to go into inventory. Grab the chilies and drag them over to the spice container. So that'll be a couple. So we've got to still, we got, we'll have a couple of chilies left over as well. Uh, for another achievement later on. But now let's go to the left. Let's go to the uh, left again. And from here we're going to go down to the bottom left corner there. The gas station. We're cheap. Uh, tap on the oil tap. Which is on the left. Just uh, by the stairs there. And that's going to get us some oil in our little spice container. Right, another thing we're going to do. We are going to get the... Um, right, we're all good for the oil. So get your fishing rod out. Use it on the water. Anywhere on the water makes not a lick of difference, but we are going to catch a fish in no time at all. Which would be handy. Right, nice. Now what we're going to do, open up the inventory again, and now we're going to grab the fish and put it with the chilies. So this is important to basically kill a seagull, because why not? Uh, why not, since we're trying to speedrun, might as well kill a seagull in the, f in the process as well. So add the fish to the chilies, we're going to exit. We're going to go... Um, into the charter shop and we're going to grab the blue mug which is just on the till right there just on the desk so grab the medium sized blue mug and somehow we fit that in the spice container as well happy days right okay right now we're going to go up 
the ladder into this little bedroom. Have a look at the books on the right. And look what I found. And we got some some herbs for some reason. Just random leaf just chilling. So that's going to add an extra bit of spicy lysy to it. And now we're going to exit. And then we are going to exit to the bottom right corner again. Next to the power box bit. And we're going to go up. Into the generator elevator part. And up again next to the ship. Right, now we're going to go all the way to the right this time, so past the uh, ship, uh, next to this forklift. Now what we're going to do is grab your wrench, or grab the fish, sorry, we're going to grab the fish first, give it to the seagull, and then he's going to die a noble, disgusting, spicy, he's going to basically crap his pants to death, or crap, he's going to crap to death anyway, so... Now what we're going to use is the wrench on the lever on the forklift. So that should get you the hot surprise achievement. So use the wrench on the lever and just drag that down. Just sort of kick the seagull at the way he's, you know, he's not going to feel it. Now he's dead, isn't he? Uh, right, now we can grab the uh, item in the nest, the metal rod. And also what we need for extra spicy spice, there is a box with some salt on it just to the left. So make sure to be grabbing that as well. That is the white people spice, that one, the salt. Ooh, a bit peppery for me, salt. Ooh. Anyway, we are going to go back onto the ship now. <laughs> and then we're going to climb up the ladder to head back onto the ship. Again, any any cutscenes, obviously, skip them with B, of course. Now we're going to go back to the kitchen. Uh, Sabo, we don't need to speak to him. We're going to go into the freezer section, though, on the left-hand side right there. And we need to um, interact with the bottom right freezer. Because we don't need nothing, nothing in there yet. Interact with the bottom right freezer, so, you know, we don't freeze and die. And we've got a piece of ginger. There's a piece of gum on the floor as well. Just, literally, just by one. So, grab the gum. Job done. Minty man, yes. Right, now what we need to do is interact the ginger and put it in the spice container. Job done. So, and apparently your spice should be finally finished now, so we should be good to go. Right, next what we're going to do is, again, get the gum... And that should unlock you the 11 kinds of herbs and spices achievement. Grab grab the gum, put it on the left button so that it sticks down, even though it's used and it probably wouldn't be that sticky anymore. Interact with the knob right next to Six Head's head. Just the one, so it's uh, sort of pointing top right. And then interact with the right button. And that should thaw the freezer enough for us to get the hell out of there. Nice. And we're not quite done with this area yet, so what we're going to do, grab the spice thing and put it in the stew. This other spice things up, man. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, no, no. So, Mr. Stabo seems to like it, which is always handy for us. Right, what we're going to do now is go to the left. Now we're going to interact with the uh, interact with the top left freezer. There it is. We're going to get some frozen bread. Here's some sliced bread. Right, now what we need to do is interact with the middle button there. And then we need to interact with the right button. You're going to see a bit of an edit there. But make sure to turn the right button off so that the radiator comes on. Then put your bread inside the radiator. So this is another part where I spent a minute wondering what the hell I was doing wrong. So as it turned out, you got to turn the middle button on, the right button off. As soon as your bread's toasted and it pops up, grab that. And then just do the opposite then. So put the right button back on and then turn the middle button back off so that it thaws and we can nip on out again. See, it's all it all makes perfect sense, right? <laughs> Red. Right, grab, uh, give your toasted bread to Stabo. What? Oh. So Stabo's going to give us some canopies, which are basically posh sandwiches, which uh, usually yes, taste Stabo. nice, but, you know, they, they, they don't fill any kind of hole at all. But we are going to grab the canopies, and we're going to go out of the kitchen door, and we are going to uh, try and go... We're going to give the can canopies to the Hitler-looking concierge. Hitler called us filth. That's funny, coming from Juggy as Hitler right there. Uh, anyway, we're going to go in and we're going to have a little bit of dialogue conversations with uh, CeeLo Green. Oh. I didn't like them at all. Oh. 
Whoa! Ah, sir. Nah. So after this bit's done, we can now go back out and down, and we can go back into the kitchen, and we can grab some more canapois, some more posh lobster sandwiches, whatever the hell they are. Go back out. Now what we need to do is uh, paint the canopies. So put it in your inventory, or open up your inventory, use the brush with the canopies there to paint them white, and for some reason that'll go well with uh, all the posh douchebags. Uh, we don't need to give it a Hitler, we can just walk straight back in and we're automatically going to give the white sandwiches to CeeLo Green right there. And for some reason there's Lionel Richie as Frankenstein as a barman right there. But anyway, we're going to head to the right. And a little bit of um, conversation right here. Now there's going to be a timed puzzle in terms of we to get the achievement as we go down to the bottom right hand corner door right there. Um, we need to do this puzzle within three minutes. Now it's very easy. But what I suggest is, as we'll see, the captain, even though he forgets he's the captain, lets us in. We're going to automatically lock the door behind us. But we're going to see exactly what kind of puzzle it is. It's a, it's a very easy one, but we've got to do it in under three minutes anyway. But what I will tell you what to do is, uh, you're going to head, I'll tell you exactly where to head, just to see the finished product, so you can just copy there. That'll be a lot easier. So, interact with the switchboard. Now, from here, just go to... 27 minutes 30 seconds to see the finished product and go from it from there that'll be a lot easier for you window right mind builds up So apparently that's too easy, which yes, it pretty much was, but as long as you've done that in under three minutes, you'll get the those wires were as fast as lightning achievement, and then we can click the button to the left of it in order to reveal the engine. Happy days. Right, so now we automatically come back here to the main area anyway. Watch out! So again, make sure to press the B button there to skip the cutscene, of course. We're going to have a little bit of dialogue, and then we are going to get the achievement for stealing the yacht's engines. Which is pretty hardcore. Now, what we need to do is uh, go into your inventory and get the fan out. So, before heading down, go into your inventory, get the fan, and give it to Keto. There we go. Give that one, and that should get you the fantastic achievement as well. So, that'll be good. Now, we've roughly we've got less than 10 minutes left, so let's get through it. Right, so now you should have two achievements. We don't need to speak to Keto. We're all good, or Keto. Now, we can head down into the plane, boat plane. Get your, um, we need the metal rod, put it in the hole. <laughs> Lubeless, of course. And now um, we need to put the wheel to it as well. That will also get us the next achievement. Um, that fits wheelie good, which is just a very hilarious pun right there. Right, last part is in place, man, so let's do this. Right, so let's do this more. Now what we're going to do from here, when the achievement's all good, we're going to go back down into the plane. We're going to go to the right-hand side, past Lena, and we're going to interact with the winch just by our six head. So grab that, and we've bent it. It's automatically going to go into our inventory. Now this is the last thing we have to do for the game, is basically straighten out the winch and job done. So we're going to go back out. We got a pro... A winch... Oh, maybe it took a hit off. <laughs> well, if... That same time... They say... So when the dialogue is finished, let's go to the bottom right next to the power box. We're going to go up next to the generator elevator part. And then we're going to go up the sign next to the boat again. Go inside the boat, or attempt to go inside the boat. Go to the right this time, past the gas canister, and we're going to see Ladybug, whatever her name is. And I'm uh, just joking. Sorry, I almost made you lose your job. Right, so what we need to do, we need to interact with the mug. She is dying for a cup of coffee, which aren't we all. So let's go do that. We're going to head back left. We're going to head back down. I'm going to head back down and all around. Head back to the left again. 
And then we're going to head up. And then we are going to head to the right this time, so into the cafe area, where, of course, coffee is. Right, uh, interact with the coffee drinker, drinking at the bar. Um, basically, uh, we need to speak to him. Yeah, coffee's all good. Right, happy days. What we need to do then is, the pi there is a pipe right next to us. So what we need to do is interact with the pipe to extend that out a little bit. Now we need to get a wrench, and we need to use it on the bottom part of the pipe. So if you use it on the top part, he just uh, comments that it's a wrench. So we need to use the wrench on the bottom part of the pipe uh, for, in order to turn it around. And basically, it's going to be about a minute or so where water drips into it and the coffee's good, coffee drink is going to be all like, Hey man, this not my thing. This tastes like pure Strongbow peace. Hey, what happened to my coffee? Like, hey, my, make it. Sure thing, sailor. Another. See, pure strongbow piece, man. Right, so we got a fresh brew of coffee. So we're gonna head in, and we're gonna click on the coffee cup mug itself. And uh, Mama Makita is gonna be all like, "Go ahead, one eye, you. You get some hair on that butt of yours, man." And that some of that six head as well. You're looking bald up top. So we can head out, head back to the left anyway, and head out um, to the up. And we can head to the up again. And we can head onto the ship, or to attempt to. And then again, we're going to go right, of course. Now, whip out your coffee from your inventory and give it to El Welderino. Yeah. Well. Hey. But I think, hey kid. So, apparently, since she's forever grateful, we can now grab the access card, so make sure to get that. Again, that's how easy it is to get around in life. You bring someone a cup of coffee, you can access any part of the ship you want. Nice. So we're going to head back down anyway. Uh, we're going to go back to the left. And then we're going to use the access card, which is on the right-hand side of the elevator. So there it is, card terminal. So use the access card on the card terminal. That'll open up the elevator. I mean, literally, we could have just asked to borrow it about 20 minutes ago and we could have got this done quicker. But anyway, click 3, 2, 5, 7. So 3, 2, 5, 7. That is what will get us the passcode and we're, uh, we're uh, in order to climb the elevator. Sorry. So what you're going to do is uh, click the up button, first of all. And this time, we're just going to go all the way up. Now, we have to do a bit of... Um, I mean, it's not complicated, but basically, when we go back into the elevator, we have to stop it at a time where we see, like, a panel with four bolts in it. So, we're going to ride up all the way. So, we need to click down on the elevator. When we go back in the elevator now, which is what we're going to do, click down on the elevator, and as soon as you see the panel with four big bolts on it, click the X button in the middle. So, right now... There we go. Um, but you have to do it in such a point that he can actually reach it. Because apparently he can't just, you know, climb up and reach it. So, um, so what? again, if that happens, that's fine. Um, you'll just have to do a bit of fiddling to sort of go up and click the button. And <laughs> just keep doing this. It may take a little bit of time. Um, but if you can sort of get it about, you know, about there. Just where apparently, literally, it's like an inch underneath. But apparently he can reach that one. So anyway... Move the bolts so they are in line with the shapes. So it's all sort of in one line, as you can see. And then what what will happen then, we can um, loosen up the plate. Job done. And now we can actually flick through. So, sabotage rocks, man. So now we're actually going to go through, and here we are. Now we're going to get our wrench, or winch, or whatever the bloody hell it was. The broken winch, we're going to use it on the track. And that is going to straighten that boy out. It's Plus that gets us a straight up achievement and then we are all good right so from here We are literally almost almost done with the game now. We can just head back down and Then we can head back down the elevator of course Next let us head back out and then we're going to go to the, um, where we go in? We go into the charter, of course, so we're going back to the power box area, back to the left, into, into the sort of the main area. 
we're going to go back down onto the airplane, boat, plane, go to the right. Grab your new straightened winch and put it on the winch above you. And that is the end of the first game, so hopefully... Following this game and following this guide, you would have got every single achievement, including the speedrun one, so I hope you have. Uh, so just make sure that both of those have unlocked. There is, if you didn't manage to do it, there is a, a brilliant guide online where he just gets straight to the point without doing all the things that we've done, um, which takes him about 30 minutes or so. But there we go then, guys and gals. That's the first journey done. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the game and guide. If you did, don't forget a lot, of course, to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Big shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon, and for everyone who interacts with me on the daily. I shall see you in, uh, well, I'll see you for the journey down chapter two, which is a lot easier because there's no friggin' speedrun. So, until next time, big love.